A probability distribution function is some function that may be used to define a particular probability distribution. A discrete probability distribution function has two characteristics. Number one, each probability is between zero and one inclusive, meaning the probabilities do include zero and one. And number two, the sum of all the probabilities is equal to one. As an example, a child psychologist is interested in the number of times a newborn baby's crying wakes its mother after midnight. So 50 random mothers were asked how many times their newborn baby's crying woke them after midnight per week. The following information was obtained. First we let the random variable x equal the number of times per week a newborn's baby's crying wakes its mother after midnight. For this example, x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is the number of times the newborn baby's crying woke the mother after midnight in one week. And p of x is equal to the probability that the random variable x takes on the value of little x. So again, the random variable x takes on the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, shown here in the first column. Looking at the table more closely, the probability that x is equal to 0 meaning the newborn baby's crying never woke the mother up in the week is equal to 2 fiftieths. The probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 11 fiftieths. The probability that x is equal to 2 is equal to 23 fiftieths, and so on. This is a discrete probability distribution function because each probability is between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, and because the sum of the probabilities is equal to 1. I do want to mention a couple things about capital X, the random variable, and little x. The random variable is capital X and takes on the values small x. So the connection between the values and the events is that capital X equals small x is the event that capital X takes the value of small x. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose Nancy has classes three times a week. She attends classes three days a week, 80% of the time, two days, 15% of the time, one day, 4% of the time, and zero days, 1% of the time. Suppose one week is randomly selected. For part A, we let capital X, the random variable, equal the number of days Nancy attends class. Capital X takes on the values of, well, she attends class three days, two days, one day, or zero days, and therefore capital X takes on the values of 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then part C, suppose one day is randomly chosen, construct a probability distribution table shown here on the right. So the possible values of X are 0, 1, 2, and 3. The probability that X is equal to 0 would be the probability she attends class 0 days in the week, which is 1%. We normally express the probability as a fraction or decimal. I'm going to go ahead and give p of x or p of 0 as a decimal. 1% is equal to 0 0.01. Next we have the probability that x is equal to 1, which would be the probability she attends class one day in the week, which is 4% or as a decimal 0 0.04. Next we have the probability x is equal to 2, which is the probability she attends class two days, which is 15% or is a decimal 0 0.15. And then finally we have x equals three. The probability x equals three is the probability she attends class three days in the week, which is 80% or is a decimal 0 0.8. So the two conditions for discrete probability distribution function is all the probabilities are between zero and one, including zero and one, which is true, and also the probabilities must sum to one. So let's go ahead and check the sum of these probabilities. We have 0 0.01 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.8, which is equal to one. So this does confirm, this does represent a discrete probability distribution function. The content from this lesson is from the OpenStax Introductory Statistics textbook, which can be downloaded free using the link shown here on the screen. Thank you for watching.